A few years ago, I created a video on the Auto Optimize plugin, specifically around reducing render blocking JavaScript. That plugin has gone through a number of different changes over the, over the years, and I thought it was time to take a look at uh, what the latest update can do for your blog. I am going to caveat this and say the blog I'm playing with today is using W3 Total Cache, which is one of my favorite plugins. And the Auto Optimize plugin does a lot of the uh, uh, similar things that W3 Total Cache does. So I'm interested to see if uh, Auto Optimize will really show any huge improvements over what W3 Total Cache is already doing. Uh, right before I started this video, I took a look at a couple of website performance sites here, uh, specifically Google PageSpeed Insights and GT Metrics. And I'm looking at one of the more popular posts on, on this blog to see how they are performing. And as you can see here, using PageSpeed Insights, my desktop score is a paltry 53 and my mobile score is a 24. Uh, not very good. Um, and you can see uh, render blocking resources. There are uh, one JavaScript file and three CSS files, one of them being related to Google Fonts. The other three are on my site. If we look at GT Metrics, not much better here on that same um, page. Uh, page speed score is a 60% for a D, 58% on the Y slope for an E. So there's definitely some room for improvement here. Let's take a look at the auto optimize settings. So I've already downloaded the plugin to my website. And when you go to the settings page, it's pretty simplistic to set up. You've got uh, uh, really three options we'll be playing with. You've got your JavaScript options, your CSS options, and your HTML options. I'm not going to be touching CDN or cache info or any of this miscellaneous stuff, nor will I be touching anything in these other tabs here. First thing you want to do is you want to tick the box to optimize JavaScript code and leave uh, the option to aggregate all your, your linked JavaScript files. You can leave everything else off. Uh, you'll do the same for optimized CSS, so you're aggregating your CSS files. Uh, and we are going to come back to this inline and defer CSS option here in a minute. And then you want to optimize your HTML code. That's all you need to do to turn this thing on. This inline and defer CSS will run our page speed scores here uh, without it, and then we'll turn this on to see if it has any uh, other impact to the loading of our, our page. So scroll down to the bottom, click on your save changes and empty cache, and then for kicks, we are going to purge all of our W3 total cache options here, empty that page cache, which we probably already did. Uh, and let's run our test here using Google PageSpeed Insights. Uh, mobile score 23, desktop is 43, so it went down, but just for kicks, I'm going to re-execute it here um, because sometimes there, there seems to be some, some cache issues when I've done this before. I am not a huge fan of, of PageSpeed Insights. Let's, let's re-execute this. 24 and 58. Not really too impressed here. Let's see what GT Metrics has to tell us here. So 60, 58. Again, not a damn bit of difference. Uh, let's retest this again to see if anything's being cached. 69, 65. So we, we did get a, a very slight increase on our on our scores here. So let's try to add one additional option here under our CSS. Actually, if I go back here, I want to see render blocking resources. 
doesn't appear to be the problem though, does it? Here's our two auto-optimized CSS files. Still some render blocking stuff going on here. We are going to try our inline and defer CSS, which helps only load what specific CSS is needed before that page is painted. Now, there's an extra step you have to go through here. You need to tell the plugin what CSS you want loaded above the fold. And it gets a little complicated because in theory, every page on your website could be using some different CSS. So that's why in this case here, I am using a specific page, a post on my, my blog, because all of my posts for that blog are using the same CSS. So you need to figure out what is, um, what is your above the fold CSS. Thankfully, there's a couple of tools that we can use for this. I'll post this down in the comments below, but one of the tools, and this is different than the tool I used last time, just because it, I seem to like it a little bit better, is the Sitelocity. And what we can do here is we can post our URL and ask it to analyze and generate what CSS is being loaded above the fold. And what it does here is it generates this critical path CSS. So what we want to do is select it, copy it, and paste it in your auto-optimized settings box here. And then we'll come down here, we will save our changes, empty that page cache, and I'm emptying the page cache here with W3 total cache, and let us re-execute some things here. So we had a 25 and a 58. Let's analyze that. So we went from a 25 on our mobile score to a 37 desktop score, went down a little bit. I am going to re-execute it just to see if there's anything going on with the cache here. So 47 and a 51. And if I look at render blocking, it made a significant improvement on the render blocking. Uh, it, it ended up getting rid of everything except one of the minify files I've got going on here. Let's take a quick look at GT metrics. So we were at a 69 and a 65 here. And really, no difference. Um, it actually went down from a 69 to a 61, a 65 to a 57. So I'm not really too impressed here. Let's shut this thing off. I am going to turn off JavaScript, turn off CSS, and turn off Optimize HTML code. Let's save our changes. Empty that page cache. We are going to do a re-execution of both of these sites. 29.93, so the desktop score skyrocketed. The mobile score is, uh, I think we left this off at, a, it was a 25 last time, so it actually improved a little bit. And uh, you'll see we're back to our render blocking issues going on here. Let's go to GT Metrics. Let's do a test here. We had a 61 on the page speed score, a 65 on the Y slow score. Uh, slight degradation of performance here based on when I had auto optimize turned on. I guess to summarize things, uh, I'm not seeing a huge performance improvement by using the Auto Optimize plugin. That very well could have something to do with me already using W3 Total Cache uh, and the Minify settings that I that I'm using with that. Uh, it might be an interesting test to to try Auto Optimize without W3 Total Cache turned on, uh, but that's a, a story for another video. So. There we have it. I'm not sure I'd recommend using this. I, I will not be using it on my on my current site. I'm just not seeing any any huge benefit to 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 it right now. If you don't disagree, if you've had uh, some uh, improvements on your site using it, I I would love to hear from you in the comments below.